Welcome to the press conference held in conjunction with the release of the second quarter GDP performance for 2023. Bank Negara Malaysia Governor Yang Berbahagia Dato Abdul Rashid Gafur and Chief Statistician Malaysia Yang Berbahagia Dato Sri Dr. Muhammad Uzir Mahidin will preside over this joint press conference today. Without further ado, I would like now to hand over to Governor. Governor, silakan. Thank you, Shasha. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dan salam sejahtera. Terima kasih kerana menghadiri sedang akhbar pada pagi ini mengenai prestasi ekonomi negara pada suku kedua tahun 2023 dan juga perkembangan monetari dan kewangan oleh Bank Negara Malaysia dan Jabatan Perangkaan Malaysia yang merupakan agensi rasmi yang mengumpul dan menerbitkan statistik KDNK negara. Please allow me to continue the presentation uh, in English and this is for the benefit of our international audience. <coughs> in the second quarter of 2023, global growth was modest. While the labour market remained resilient, growth continued to be weighed by higher interest rates and elevated inflation. China's growth came in below expectation, despite benefiting from low base from the lockdown back in second quarter 2022. Global headline inflation continued to moderate, and this is in line with lower commodity prices. Meanwhile, core inflation moderated at a much slower pace, given the resilient labor market. Regional exports contracted, reflecting slowing global demand, ongoing shift in consumption from goods to services, and also the down cycle in E&E &E sector, particularly for consumer electronics. Let me now hand over the presentation to Datuk Sri Dr. Uzil to announce Malaysia's GDP performance in the second quarter of 2023. Datuk Sri. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. Pada suku kedua 2023, ekonomi Malaysia berkembang 2.9% disokong oleh pasaran buruh yang bertambah baik, peningkatan permintaan dalam negeri yang berterusan dan aktiviti pelancongan yang semakin rancak. Namun, pengurangan permintaan luar negeri dalam keadaan kitaran menurun teknologi global dan pengeluaran komuniti yang lebih rendah menjejaskan pertumbuhan ekonomi. Pertumbuhan tahunan yang lebih perlahan pada suku ini turut mencerminkan kesan asas yang tinggi dari suku kedua 2022 selepas pembukaan semula ekonomi negara dan kesan daripada pelaksanaan beberapa langkah dasar. Dari segi pertumbuhan suku tahun ke suku tahun pelarasan musim, KDNK menunjukkan peningkatan momentum pertumbuhan yang lebih kukuh sebanyak 1.5% iaitu peningkatan berterusan sejak suku keempat 2022. Pada suku kedua ini, tiga sektor menca terus mencatatkan pertumbuhan iaitu sektor perkhidmatan meningkat sebanyak 4.7%, sektor pembuatan meningkat sebanyak 0.1%, dan sektor pembuat, uh, pembinaan meningkat sebanyak 6.2%. Mangkala dua sektor mencatatkan penurunan pada kali ini iaitu sektor pertanian uh, merosot sebanyak 1.1% uh, dan sektor pelombongan merosot 2.3%. In the second quarter of 2023, the Malaysian economy recorded a growth of 2.9% supported by improving labor market condition, continue increase in domestic demand and higher tourism activities. However, the weaker external demand amid the global technology down cycle and lower commodity production weighed down the growth. It's also important to note that the moderate annual GDP growth reflected the high base in the second quarter of 2022 from the effect of the economy reopening, reopening and policy measure. On seasonal adjusted quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, GDP 
show a stronger growth momentum of 1.5%, a continued more improvement since fourth quarter of 2022. On demand side, growth was supported by both private and public sector expenditure. Private consumption growth was underpinned by firm labor market condition. Spending expanded moderately across both necessity and discretionary items. Growth in overall investment improved, driven by capital expenditure on structures and machinery and equipment, as well as improved government fixed asset spending. However, during this quarter, net export register a contraction due to the more challenging global environment. Turning to the supply side, growth is driven mainly by the services and construction sectors. The services sector grows moderated across both consumer and business related subsectors. Nevertheless, the sector continues to benefit from improving tourism related spending. In fact, this is one of the bright spots during the quarter. For the construction sector, growth remains supported by continued progress of large infrastructure projects and higher special travel trade activities. Hot weather and plant maintenance had affected commodity production and led to construction contraction in the agriculture and mining sector. Let me now turn to the balance of payment. For the second quarter of 2023, the Malaysian current account balance uh, recorded a higher surplus of 9.5 billion on 2.1% of GDP, mainly supported by net export of goods. The services account deficit narrow by 12.0% quarter on quarter to RM 11.3 billion reflecting mainly further recovery in inbound tourism. In addition, the primary income account registered a lower deficit, mainly due to higher income generated by Malaysian investing abroad. Meanwhile, secondary income account deficit contracted from RM 5.9 billion in the preceding quarter to RM 2.8 billion. On the financial account, foreign direct investment FDI inflows moderated to RM 3.1 billion during the quarter. The FDI inflows were supported by higher equity injection, reflecting foreign investor continued confidence on business prospects in the country. This investment were channeled mainly into the services sector, predominantly in professional scientific and technical and financial subsector. The FDI were primarily from Singapore, Taiwan and Germany. In meantime, the direct investment abroad DIA outflows expanded to RM 8.0 billion as compared to RM 1.1 billion in the previous quarter. The outflow was mainly due to higher equity injection and profit return abroad. The major sector contributed to the DIA were services, particularly in financial and information and telecommunication subsector. The DIA major destination were to Singapore, Indonesia, and Norway. Let me now hand over back the presentation back to Tom. Now. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sri, Dr. Uze. Uh, for 2023, we expect uh, Malaysia's growth to be close to the lower end of our growth forecast range, uh, and this is uh, underpinned by domestic uh, demand. Let me reiterate that the moderate growth in second quarter of 2023 was partly driven by several temporary factors, including uh, plant maintenance in the mining sector, the hot weather affecting the agricultural output, as well as uh, high base effects from the economic reopening and policy measures in the second quarter of last year. Based on our estimation, had it not been for the synchronized commodity-related factors, growth could have been 40 basis points higher at 3.3% for the second quarter. Going forward, 
Growth will be supported by four factors. Uh, first is the continued recovery in the labour market. Second, implementation of new and existing investment projects. Third, higher tourism activity. And fourth, the dissipation of plant maintenance activities in the mining sector. Nevertheless, in our baseline forecast, the weak external demand is expected to weigh on near-term growth. The economy is facing downside risks stemming from a weaker than expected global growth and a deeper or longer than expected technology down cycle. Beyond that, there could be lower than expected commodity production domestically due to stronger impact from El Nino and prolonged plant maintenance. On the upside, tourism activity could pick up even more while progress of investment projects could be faster than expected. In the near term, the external environment is expected to remain challenging. Uh, nevertheless, indicators of domestic demand in the bottom row of the slide that you're seeing continue to point towards a positive expansion in growth. As a small open economy, Malaysia is affected by the slowdown in global demand. Like other regional economies, Malaysia's exports also declined in the second quarter of this year. And this was driven mainly by weaker manufactured goods amid a downturn in global tax cycle and also lower commodity prices. The global semiconductor sales, which have been declining thus far, are showing tentative signs of bottoming out. Furthermore, Based on the world's semiconductor trade statistics, they're projecting a positive growth in 2024 on the back of improving demand and easing of inventory corrections. In addition, tourism-related activities are also expected to pick up further and provide support to growth. This was as mentioned by our chief statistician. Tourism was one of the bright spots in the second quarter. We are already seeing strong increase in tourist arrivals and also tourist spending. The labour market continued to improve in quarter two, 2003. The unemployment rate declined further to 3.4% in June, and this is driven by steady employment growth. I would like to draw your attention to the bottom right of the chart. Vulnerable segments such as women and youth have also recovered to pre-pandemic levels. However, there is still room for improvement as labour participation amongst women remains way below that of men, which is one of the focus areas of the Madani economic framework recently announced by the government. Moving to household, household spending continues to expand, supported by wage growth and ample financial buffers of the household. High-frequency data such as credit card spending and passenger car sales continue to record above pre-pandemic figures. <coughs> Going forward, household spending will remain as the anchor of growth, underpinned by continued employment growth, healthy household financial buffers, government policy measures, and also easing price pressures. In second half 2023, households remain supported by recent measures announced by the government, uh, namely the 100 ringgit E29 for B40s and M40s, as well as the RM300 and 200 special assistance for civil servants and pensioners, respectively. Growth continues to be supported by investment activity. Financing for capital expenditure remains forthcoming and also investment intentions. New approved investments total 71.4 billion ringgit in the first quarter of 2023. Going forward, the economy will benefit from the realization of new investment and also from existing projects, particularly the large infra projects such as the ECRL and also the digitalization projects. I should mention, progress of this investment is critical not just to support immediate growth, but also to lift Malaysia's future growth potential. In this regard, 
The implementation of catalytic projects, such as those announced under the recently unveiled National Energy Transition Roadmap, would also provide support uh, to growth uh, in the medium term. In fact, some of these projects are already in progress, with more commencing next year. It is important to note, because it's not just focused on the headline GDP growth, but also quality growth that is inclusive and also sustainable over the long term. To this end, the Madani framework will anchor the restructuring of the Malaysian economy to achieve this vision. Within this framework, the Malaysian economy will see several important transformations, such as having a revitalized industrial sector that is supported by quality investments, which will create quality and high paying jobs, becoming a climate resilient and greener economy, and also improvement in fiscal governance and transparency which will enhance confidence from investors and also credit rating agencies. Among the key initiatives which will be important in driving this includes the new industrial master plan, the, the national energy transformation transition roadmap, and the tabling of the Fiscal Responsibility Act. In short term, we can expect to see positives to support growth from the implementation of several important catalyt catalytical projects under the National Energy Transition Roadmap. Now, let me turn to inflation. In line with the easing cost environment, headline inflation continued to trend lower in the second quarter, averaging 2.8% for the quarter as compared to 3.6% for the first quarter. Much of this downtrend was driven by lower core inflation, which contributed around half of the decline during the second quarter. While core inflation moderated to 3.4% during the quarter, it was at 3.9% as at quarter one, it remains elevated relative to the historical average of around 2%, therefore the need to remain vigilant. The lower core inflation was mainly due to lower inflation for food away from home and communication services. Looking deeper into the dynamics of inflation, price changes can be driven by either sector-specific, we call it idiosyncratic factors, or economy-wide factors, we call it the common factors. While the former, the idiosyncratic factor, lead to price changes of specific goods and services relative to others, the latter, or the common factors, exert widespread general price pressures. Over the past two years, the common component has risen significantly, given the confluence of multiple supply and demand shocks. During the high inflation environment, firms also reported to have found it easier to raise prices, a shift in price-setting behavior that could further contribute to the rise in common inflation. At present, the ongoing disinflationary trend has been contributed by both common and idiosyncratic components. And of note, the disinflationary process would have been more gradual in the absence of idiosyncratic component. <coughs> <coughs> I would invite you to read our box article on this entitled Understanding Inflation Drivers differentiating common and idiosyncratic dynamics in Malaysia in this QB. <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> Let me take a minute to speak on the risk to inflation. Uh, we see that risk to inflation uh, stem mainly from global developments. Uh, both headline and core inflation are expected to moderate over the course of 2023. Headline inflation is expected to average uh, close to lower bound of the earlier communicated forecast range of between 2.8 to 3.8 percent. While cost pressures have eased, core inflation will remain at elevated levels as demand conditions remain rather firm. The balance of risk to inflation is mostly tied to global developments. Near-term upside risks include the higher global commodity prices from geopolitical conflicts and adverse weather events like the El Nino, and also higher imported input amid the exchange rate depreciation. 
This risk could be offset by subdued global commodity prices due to a weaker global growth outlook and a faster, and, and a faster dissipation of domestic pent up demand. Turning to monetary policy, the MPC maintained the OPR at 2% at the July 2023 meeting. At the current OPR level, the MPC deemed the monetary policy stance to be slightly accommodative and also supportive of the economy. Uh, going forward, the MPC will continue to closely monitor the ongoing domestic and global developments and their impact on domestic inflation and our growth prospects. The MPC will ensure that the monetary policy stance remains conducive to sustainable economic growth amid price stability. On the financial markets, adjustments in the domestic financial markets were mostly driven by global developments, including investors' expectations of further monetary policy tightening in the US and other advanced economies, the weaker than expected economic rebound from China, and the US debt ceiling crisis earlier in the second quarter of this year. The domestic equity market was also affected this year by lower global demand for semiconductors and lower commodity prices, as well as weakening corporate earnings. However, domestic government bond yields declined during the second quarter, supported by non-resident inflows. Reflecting investors' expectations of further aggressive monetary policy tightening in the US and also other advanced economies throughout the first half of the year, the ringgit depreciated by 4.7% against the US dollar year to date. Recently, however, the ringgit has appreciated by 1.1% against the US dollar since the second quarter of this year. The NEER, which measures the ringgit performance against our major trading partners, has also appreciated by 1.6%. This is amid overall market expectations that the aggressive monetary policy tightening campaign in the US is nearing to its end. Bank of Malaysia will continue to closely monitor global and domestic financial conditions and ensure market adjustments remain orderly. Towards this end, Bank presence in the foreign exchange market is to stem currency movements that are deemed excessive. Thus, Banagara will continue to manage risks arising from any heightened financial market volatility. The banking system will continue to play an important role in supporting growth this year. Owing to their strong financial position, including high levels of capital and liquidity buffers, our banks remain well positioned to support the financing needs of the domestic economy. Banks have also set aside adequate reserves to cover potential credit losses. And this is important because some households and businesses, including SME borrowers, still face vulnerabilities in the current environment of elevated costs. Overall, household and business impairments remain low and stable, indicating that most borrowers are able to repay their loans in a timely manner. Households' median debt service ratio of 36% for outstanding loans and businesses' median interest coverage of 5.8% of of for 5.8 times. Sorry. Uh, bespoke repayment assistance also remains available for borrowers who continue to face financial difficulties. Financing activity by banks and the FIs to the SMEs remain supportive of economic activity. Uh, with steady growth in outstanding financing at 6.4%. Financing approvals continue to support both working capital and investment purposes, surpassing uh, historical quarterly trends. And more positively, we saw sustained double-digit growth in financing approvals for investment-related purposes. In quarter two, 2023, the growth in the approvals was primarily driven by the services sector, uh, particularly in the finance, real estate, and transport storage and communication sectors. In summary, the Malaysian economy expanded by 2.9% in the second quarter of 2023, 
driven mainly by private sector expenditure. Growth is projected to be close to the lower end of the forecast range of between 4% to 5% for 2023 as a whole, anchored by domestic demand. There are downside risks to growth, stemming primarily from external factors. Meanwhile, upside risks are mainly from domestic factors, such as stronger than expected tourism activity and implementation of projects. On inflation, both headline and core are expected to average between 2.8% and 3.8% and for this year. And I've come to the end of the presentation today. Uh, my team and I, and Dr. Sri Uze and his team, will be happy to take questions uh, from the media. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Dr. Sri Uze. Now, I would like to welcome questions from the media. If you do have your question, please raise your hand. My colleague will come to you. But before that, uh, please state your name and organization. And as usual, we will group our questions according to three segments, the economy. So all questions on the economy. A second segment will be on the financial sector. And if we do have time, we'll go to other topics. But let's start with the economy. I see Jason up front. Hi, Governor. Uh, can I take this opportunity to just congratulate you on your appointment? Um, I actually have a question for Dozum first. Um, what's the, uh, I mean, what happened to the advanced GPS mate that's supposed to come uh, a few weeks ago? Uh, that's my first question. Uh, my second question is about the, um, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the, uh, uh, the external risk. Uh, we've been reading about uh, uh, risk from China and so on. There's been uh, troubles in their uh, financial sector and so on. Uh, any idea if that's, that's a risk to Malaysia? Uh, I think I'll stop here for now first. Okay. Thank you, Jason. We have Anissa and then we have another question um, on the second row. Hello, Governor. I am Anissa from Bloomberg. Um, I have two questions. Um, do you see the GDP figures um, bottoming out in this quarter and climbing further in the third and fourth quarter? My second question is, how soon do you see exports recovering? Thank you, Anissa. And the gentleman behind Anissa, do you still have a question? Yes. Hi. I'm Hari from Business Today. Um, with the uh, two quarters, quarter one and quarter two, um, has the government actually actively uh, addressed the factor of leakages uh, within the economy? Could you please comment on this? Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to do another sweep. Any questions on the economy? Okay, if, uh, yes, uh, two more questions on my left and the gentleman on my right. Hi, uh, good morning. Uh, this is Keith from Starbiz. First of all, uh, thank you to this uh, Bank Nagara and the Statistics Department for the information compiled today. Uh, my question is actually on the global economy uh, for uh, Governor Rashid. How do you see the global economy moving forward into 2023 and do you have any data about how it has performed in the first half of 2023, especially in places like the US, China and the Eurozone? Thank you. Thank you so much. Do we still have a question in the middle? Uh, hi, uh, I'm Dixing from Nanyang. And uh, my question is, uh, okay, the, the private consumption shows sign of weakness in Q2. So do BNM expect the private consumption to continue slow down in the second half? Thank you. Thank you so much. I think we have enough questions for this first round. Maybe I'll just summarize again. Maybe we'll start off with Dato Sri Uze, if you can um, just um, explain on the announcement of the advance estimate. And then we'll go to risk on in terms of global economy. There was a question on how we see global economy. Mm. And also following that, uh, external risk from China, mm. any impact on Malaysia. And with that, I think we'll follow through uh, the third question on exports in general. Let's follow through from the global export performance. How export, would it be recovering in the second half? And I think lastly, we'll go to is the second quarter uh, the bottom for this year, followed by uh, private consumption. 
Dr. Sri Uzi. On the question on the advanced estimate, yes, uh, Department of Statistics Malaysia uh, try to embrace uh, the good practice uh, for the advanced national copies, which uh, like uh, US, UK, and our neighbor. Eh? where they already released uh, the A1 estimate very much earlier than the actual GDP numbers. So, I, uh, and the sources of the estimation mainly from the uh, primary uh, data collection on the monthly basis and also the secondary data collection. So, normally for the A1 estimate, uh, normally they based on the two-month plus uh, uh, data. For example, for the second quarter, maybe... Uh, May and June and part of uh, uh, April and May part of July. So for the third quarter, uh, July, August and part of the September. So during uh, our uh, uh, assessment for the second quarter, some of the data is not really uh, permitted eh, for us to proceed with the what we announced earlier to release uh, the advanced estimate. So now the team and uh, we all the uh, we also consult our uh, partners, uh, our uh, peer, to revisit some of the uh, I mean the modeling where when they are uh, where the administration record may not really uh, come and perhaps for the near future, I think very soon uh, Malaysia will see the M1 estimate uh, really. Uh, can come uh, in the, I mean, uh, to, to be ready to the public. So I think uh, we will be able to uh, make the, the announce, uh, announcement on uh, the raising of A1 estimate very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sri. Governor? Thank you, Shasha. Thank you for all the questions. Um, I think to Jason's question about China and also in terms of uh, risk to Malaysia and also global growth a bit. Uh, in terms of global growth, uh, it's lower in uh, this year. And this is due mainly to the headwinds from elevated uh, cost pressure, uh, high interest rate, and also uh, weaker goods rates. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, growth remains supported by our resilient uh, domestic demand and also strong uh, labor market conditions and continued improvements in global tourism activity. Uh, while China's reopening uh, remains supportive of the global economy, uh, its pace uh, of recovery has slowed in recent months. We acknowledge that. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the Indonesian economy is also well diversified in terms of uh, product and trade partners. Therefore, they will also cushion in terms of um, the impact that's coming uh, from China. And I should also clarify that uh, we have been rather conservative uh, in our forecast uh, for China. And um, over the decades, as I mentioned just now, we have deliberately developed uh, a highly diversified economy and diversified trade partners. And this means we don't rely too much on one particular industry or one particular trade partner. While uh, China is our second uh, largest uh, export market, it only accounts for 13.6% of Malaysia's uh, total exports. There are others that also uh, count higher. And also in terms of uh, relating to what you highlighted with regard to the global economy and the risk to Malaysia, if you look in terms of our financial sector, they are also resilient. Uh, banks are lending to households and businesses and look at liquidity, it remains ample as well. And we have the means to manage the uh, volatility we see in the financial markets as well. And lastly, another point that I need to highlight is that uh, our external positions remain strong with our current account surplus and also adequate international reserves. Uh, these factors together with the uh, flexible exchange rate will support our ability to weather the external shocks uh, that, that we hit the economy. Thank you, uh, Jason. That's on your question. With regard to uh, the questions on uh, Manisa Bloomberg on the GDP figure bottoming in quarter two, uh, how soon will we see uh, recovery? I think GDP growth in the second half of 2023 would have to average between um, to 3.7% uh, to achieve uh, the 4% lower bound growth uh, for 2023. Uh, going forward, uh, we see growth is expected to continue to be driven by expansion in domestic demand uh, amid weaknesses uh, in, in the external demand. Uh, this will be supported by a few factors, uh, Nisa. One is in terms of the continued improvement in labour market conditions that we are seeing, uh, continued progress of multi-year investment projects by both uh, the private and public sector. Um, as I mentioned just now, the higher tourism activity will also uh, further 
uh, help us in terms of the recovery regard to not just tourist arrivals, but also in terms of travel receipts towards the pre-pandemic levels. And if you look at the supply side, the growth will continue to be driven by the services and construction sectors. In terms of um, private consumption, uh, it is at 4.3% this quarter. What I can say is that uh, private consumption remains as the anchor of growth uh, for the economy. If you look at the household spending, it's supported by continued investments uh, or improvements in the labour market. And policy measures are also in place uh, to assist affected households uh, facing higher cost of living. And this includes uh, cash transfers, uh, labour-related measures, and also price controls on fuel and selected food items. Uh, as well as electricity uh, rebates. And for example, in terms of labour market, uh, we expect employment to grow by 2.4% this year, uh, while unemployment rate, although it's at 3.4% in June, we expect this to come down further. And we may even have uh, revert back to the pre-pandemic level of 3.3% uh, in the fourth quarter. So all this will support consumption as we move forward. Thank you so much for that first round of questions and I think uh, for our colleague uh, from Nanyang, Governor also gave a bonus response not just on private consumption but also on domestic demand in general and how we see investments as well. Maybe I'll open up to a second round, yes? Thank you. Some follow-up questions are on the responses earlier. Uh, for Datuk Uzir, uh, when you say soon for the advanced GDP estimates, um, can you clarify what is it that the data that was not ready this round, uh, that, that it didn't happen? And also, when you say soon, does that mean that third quarter we will have the advanced estimates? Yeah. Yes, we're looking forward uh, for the third quarter estimate, but it depends on the, the readiness of the uh, s s uh, information. We, we try to get some information from the uh, emergency record. Uh, from Sorry, the, from oh, who? Some of the record is from the administration record, from the I mean, uh, from the uh, payroll, from from the I mean, uh, 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 the development project and so forth. Mm -hmm. So we're looking forward that the data will be uh, we will see on, on time. So hopefully we can uh, uh, back to the our uh, promise to have the advance estimate. So if, if it happens, uh, will it be uh, earlier than the current 3Q yeah. GDP? Yes, about uh, four weeks. Huh? Four week, uh, after four. the reference quarters. Four weeks. Uh, that's the standard for advanced met uh, across the other, I mean, uh, uh, we do the benchmark with the other country. The advanced met normally uh, about four weeks after the reference uh, quarter and the actual uh, GDP like today will be seven weeks uh, after the reference quarter. So we managed to notice, notice uh, with the three weeks. Okay. But with that, uh, bear in mind that uh, we already also to make sure that the the numbers from the MI estimate and the actual numbers not really deeper. And oh, yes. we already developed this. Uh, we looking forward that to have it very, very, very soon. Thank oh, you. Okay, thank you. Um, and for Governor, um, okay. Uh, you you said that um, you expect growth this year to be nearer to the lower end. Uh, are you not? But you chose not to um, narrow your forecast. Uh, is that because there is still a chance uh, of growth being stronger than expected um, in the second half, or are you waiting for third quarter numbers to be released? And yeah, is is there actually a chance? of uh, us being above uh, four and a half this year. And um, in terms of monetary policy divergence, how, how concerned um, is uh, Bank Negara on um, the divergence in, in, in the Yuan uh, in terms of policy uh, globally? Thank you. In, um, uh, this will be the, ring, the impact on the ringgit. Thanks. Thank you so much. Any more questions on the economy? Anissa again on the right, and also a few uh, questions in the middle. Anissa first, please. Uh, 
Hi. Uh, sorry, Governor. There was one other question that I asked, um, which was um, regarding exports. So it's been contracting since March 2023. So how soon do you see that recovering? Could it be this year? Thank you, Anissa. Um, the lady, yes, in blue. Uh, hi. Hi, I'm Ruby from BFM. Uh, my first question is, um, with the economy looking like uh, it's getting on track for recovery, uh, may I know what is Bank Nagara's view on how well positioned is the government to accelerate its um, subsidy ration rationalization plan? And the second question is, um, the inflation numbers are also going down. So how much would you say this is a... Uh, attributable to the past OPR hike. Thank you. Thank you. And Jason, do you still have the question? Um, I, I, I refer to your, uh, uh, your uh, presentation about uh, tourism and so on. Um, the, 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 what do you call it? The uh, tourist arrival numbers and uh, receipts have been going up. But there's been report that um, China uh, 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 Chinese tourists are not actually uh, going out so much and not spending out and you know not not spending that much. So I'm just wondering whether the uh, numbers in the tourist arrivals and tourism receipts whether that actually uh, how much of the increase actually comes from China and are they actually you know coming back and spending in, in Malaysia at least? Thanks. Okay. Okay, thank you, Jason. Uh, and just one final question at the back. Hi, I'm Sorry, Esther from the you. H. Uh, just a following, just to follow up on Anissa's questions on exports. Uh, I'm curious on uh, Bank Bank Nagara stance uh, for for calls for exporters to repatriate their foreign profit. Thank you. Okay. And sorry, one more, because I missed you earlier. Sorry for that. Yeah, no, I just had a question in the first round regarding the uh, global estimates, the estimates for global GDP going forward growth, as well as the numbers for the first half of 2023. How does, how do you see uh, Ben and see the US, Eurozone and China? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. So I think this is the list of uh, questions and we'll go... Um, by this list. First is, I think we'll go with the global economy just to set the stage again. The outlook for the global economy followed by uh, growth range. Um, are we still sticking to the growth range? Is it to the lower end, upper end? Do we, uh, do we think we'll go above four? Um, second question is on export, on export recovery. How do we see the trajectory for that? Followed by subsidy rationalization, the plans, our comments followed by inflation. I think um, media is interested in the trajectory of inflation. How much did OPR play into the reduction? And we will follow that with also questions on tourism. A lot of interest. Uh, we mentioned that uh, tourism is picking up. Uh, but how about uh, tourists from China in terms of arrivals and also spending receipts? And we'll end with export repatriation conversion question. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shasha. There are a few uh, points, a few questions asked. I think I'll start with the uh, global economy. And then uh, I'll also touch in terms of the, um, the second part in terms of export. The export, I'll get uh, Digi Sham to also come in. Uh, third, on the government subsidization. And then fourth, in terms of the inflation, uh, that is contributed uh, from our monetary policy uh, in the past and also on tourism in terms of China, right? And on the question regarding to export, there's also a, a question in terms of the stance about, uh, I believe, the conversion. Uh, we'll take up on that as well. Okay, on global growth, uh, we expect and we acknowledge that global growth is slower in 2023. And this is due to a number of uh, factors, like, from elevated cross pressure, higher interest rates, and weaker uh, goods rates. And we also expect, um, we also see in terms of uh, global trade also coming down. Uh, nevertheless, I think in case of Malaysia, as I mentioned just now, our growth remains supported uh, by our resilient domestic demand, our strong labour market conditions, and continued improvement in labour and in global tourism activity. Uh, in terms of uh, the uh, global growth again, uh, in July, WEO, uh, the IMF also revised uh, global growth from 2.8% to 2.23%. Uh, 
So there's something that I think what we have seen as well in terms of um, the global growth that was uh, out in DWEO recently. And why this happened is due to the more resilient domestic demand in the advanced economies. And going forward, uh, we expect global growth is expected to be uh, below, of course, long-term uh, average. Uh, but uh, of course, we don't expect a global recession at all. Uh, so that's from the global perspective. And we do expect uh, trade, global trade to improve towards the end of the year and uh, perhaps into 2024. That's partly to your question as well. And again, the, in terms of the tech down cycle, we also expect uh, that the tech down cycle uh, will be towards the end, uh, by the end of the year, and it will improve further uh, next year as well. But I'll get uh, DJ Sham to, to uh, elaborate further on the uh, growth. Second, I think in terms of um, impact on Malaysia, regard to the uh, range, whether it's going to be higher, uh, whether you're going to see 4.5 or not, I think uh, what's more important is that, uh, number one, the, um, as a small and open economy, whatever happened globally will affect us. And then um, what we should also see is that uh, in terms of uh, a growth that we experienced last year is high. So when you look at the quarter growth uh, last year, it was at 8.8%, quarter two. And this, way, this time around, we also see some base effects there. Uh, and also in terms of uh, for quarter three, uh, we grew at 14.1% uh, last year. So certainly you might see some impact as well. Uh, in terms of whether uh, we will see growth being at what number, uh, what figure coming forward, coming uh, moving forward, as as this point of time, uh, we still stick to the range that we have, four to five. But we said it's going to be close to uh, the lower end of the range. And uh, normally, uh, when we announce the budget, so that's where if there is a need to revise the growth range. It will happen there. And as we go into Q2, uh, Q3 and Q4, it really depends in terms of uh, how do we see um, global developments moving forward. Also in terms of the data that will come out uh, from domestic growth itself. In terms of, I think, for example, um, you see uh, we could have some upside risk if there's a continued recovery in labor market globally. And also uh, for us, and then also implementation of the new and existing investment uh, projects. If this happens even faster, we will make record of uh, higher growth. And also from the higher tourism activity itself. Uh, but of course, there are downside risks to that as well. Uh, that may come from the slower uh, global growth. Uh, if the tight monetary policy, uh, the slower trade activity, and also the prolonged global technology down cycle. And of course, uh, the uh, lower commodity production as well, the hot weather and plant maintenance output uh, affecting output in the, in the commodity sector. So this could also be down downside risk. So basically, there are also upside and downside to what we are seeing today. So what we'll see in third quarter and fourth quarter will depend on in terms of how far uh, the downside or the upside risk materialize. So that's in terms of the growth range. And in terms of, there's a question in terms of the NP divergence with regard to the uh, yen and effect on ringgit. In terms of monetary policy, uh, we focus in terms of the outlook for inflation and growth. So that's what we look at. We look in terms of the divergence in policy rate uh, from the lens of how this could have impact uh, in terms of uh, inflation moving forward and also uh, growth moving forward. So that's how we look at. In terms of uh, government subsidy rationalization, as you know, there's been the active discussions uh, in terms of um, the subsidy rationalization and also in terms of the uh, fiscal discussions. But when we talk about specific on subsidies, um, perhaps I think it's best to ask uh, the agencies that is responsible uh, for this. Uh, but that's it. I think uh, there is a general consensus that there is a need for us to move from uh, blanket subsidies to a targeted one. And this is also to address uh, leakages. And this will ensure that subsidies are delivered to the groups uh, that the policy intends uh, to help. And so any adjustment to subsidies should also take into account uh, the risk of uh, high knock-on impact on prices and also other goods and services. That's with regard to the point number three. Uh, number four, in terms of how much of the um, moderation in inflation comes from our past monetary uh, policy. 
I think we're certainly seeing the, um, the, the results or the benefits from the past hikes that we have done, the gradual and also measured approach that we have taken. As you know, that uh, party policy works with a lag between four to eight quarters. So we are now seeing uh, that um, impact coming from uh, the earlier um, gradual and measured hikes that we have undertaken. But again, as I mentioned just now, we need to remain vigilant because core is still uh, above our long-term average. Then finally, in terms of the questions with regard to tourism from China, I think, uh, Jason, we are also well diversified in terms of the uh, number of uh, tourists that, that we receive. We also are also seeing uh, a rise in terms of tourists coming from the region, from like Indonesia and Thailand, and also from the Middle East and Europe. So we're not uh, dependent uh, on the tourists uh, from China alone. So it's quite well diversified there as well. Uh, okay, yeah, there's some numbers on the tourists. The Chinese tourists from monthly data are also rising. Uh, for example, January was 45,000. Uh, May was 115,000. And uh, if you look at monthly average, 2019 it was about 250,000. So basically, there's still room for us to, to benefit from increased number of uh, tourism. Yeah. Uh, besides that, there are also other countries that are also coming in as well. Thank you, Jason. And can I pass to the Jisham on the export? Thank you, uh, Governor. If I could just uh, provide a bit more details on the export. Uh, when we look at the, our export performance in the first half and in particular in the second quarter of this year, uh, the, the poor export performance was uh, uh, affected by three factors. Namely, one is, of course, the, the slow uh, global growth. And, and second is the uh, continued tech down cycle, technology down cycle, uh, which actually affected our export of uh, semiconductors in particular. And, and the ten temporary factors that Governor explained in, term of, in terms of the weather, which affected the, uh, our uh, palm oil production and which actually go on into our manufacturing export. Included as well as the uh, plant maintenance, which affected the uh, pr production of oil and gas, which actually affected the ref uh, uh, oil refinery product export. Uh, so, uh, in terms of uh, moving forward, uh, in terms of the export for the rest of the year and going into 2024, the question really is whether these three factors, how these factors would play out. When we look at the global economy, uh, it's worthwhile to note, as Governor mentioned, that the IMF actually uh, revised upward. The, 20, the 2023 global growth from 2.8 to 3 percent in uh, 20, uh, in July this year, uh, and and uh, importantly, I think is also to to note that uh, in terms of global trade uh, growth uh, is expected by the IMF at 2 percent in 2023 to go up to 3.7 percent in uh, 2024. When we look at uh, the other thing, is important to note is that there are already tentative signs that the the uh, when it comes to the tech down cycle, there are already tentative signs that our export of uh, of uh, ENE, our export of semiconductors, are already uh, uh, recording positive growth uh, in in uh, June and July. So uh, and uh, so this is something that uh, we hope will continue. And based on what we have shown, uh, you can see on the slide there that uh, the WSTS is already forecasting that global semiconductor sales will recover. Uh, moving forward into 2024. So that would be uh, uh, some, uh, a plus point for our export moving forward. Uh, and the temporary factors that we described, we, 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 uh, we anticipate, anticipate that these uh, factors, uh, plant um, maintenance, uh, closure, the weather would uh, uh, gradually uh, dissipate as, as uh, we move uh, forward into the second half of the year. So in short is that uh, we are uh, cautious, uh, but we hope that the export would start to, to slowly recover uh, moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, DJ Shah. Maybe let me just also invite uh, Ji Anand if you want to just say on regard to the uh, interest rate differential and also in terms of the conversion rate. Okay, th uh, thank you, uh, Governor. So firstly, um, uh, on uh, of course, we, we know that the ringgit has been pretty much influenced by uh, global uh, factors, a lot of global factors. And we do see, I mean, the current situation that uh, I think one of you alluded to was the divergence between the fortunes of the Chinese yuan and the U.S. dollar. So, uh, whereas the U.S. dollar interest rates appear to be could be uh, stay quite firm, and the yuan continues to uh, to be to, to lower their interest rates. So, this would have um, uh, it, while this is uh, expected to have a temporary effect on the ringgit, 
I think the silver lining going forward is that um, the U.S. Uh, the outlook for U.S. interest rates does appear to be that it will peak at at some time um, in the near future. While uh, the Chinese economy, the the intent is pretty strong to provide continue to, to provide that uh, support, the underpinning, and um, uh, if this uh, then if if these two factors turn around, I think it, it would be clearer as a measure of support for regional currencies as a whole, including the ringgit. So. So these are the, 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 the dominant factors that continue to influence the ringgit uh, going forward. I think when it comes to the stance on uh, exporters' uh, uh, proceeds, so there was a question just now. Uh, Bengal has always uh, implemented a repatriation policy. So all exporters are required to repatriate their export proceeds within six months. What is no longer required since 2021 is to force the conversion of the uh, export proceeds into ringgit. So exporters uh, may repatriate, uh, will have to, re will are required to repatriate within six months their foreign currency proceeds uh, to, uh, to to the country. Uh, but uh, no, uh, uh, they can still hold it in foreign currency if they so wish to do so. But what we observe uh, from our own data is that uh, exporters tend to convert between 60 to 70 percent, and this is uh, pretty much a consistent trend. What we observe uh, in earlier uh, perhaps during the second quarter was um, some, some exporters uh, um, reduced their conversions, but uh, this has picked up again towards the uh, end of the uh, first half. And uh, the, the, latest date, the latest data that we did observe when it comes to exporter conversion was about 69% in July. Uh, so, um, so our position on this is that um, this is pretty much a business decision that um, that uh, exporters will have to make. They do have uh, liabilities, obligations that they need to make in local currency, so they will convert whatever is necessary. And uh, aside from that, they do have other uh, obligations that they need to meet in foreign currency. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Governor, so we only have uh, three minutes left, so this is really final round. I'm going to combine it with financial sector uh, questions, if there are any, and then we would have to conclude. Uh, Anissa, this is the final round, so maybe I'll just do another quick scan. So only one question by Anissa for the last round. Hi, yes, Governor, thank you. Um, I want to ask about um, Bank Negara Malaysia's intervention in the forex market um, to help with the ringgit, right? What exactly is the nature of the intervention? Is it like BNM is targeting a certain level? What is excess volatility? Could you just explain it for us? Thank you. Oh, and also, how long are you planning to intervene in the market on that? Yeah. Thank you. So that is the final question for our press conference today. On that note, Governor. Uh, thank you, Anissa. Uh, maybe I'll also get the Jana to come in on this as well. Uh, in terms of, I wouldn't say intervention. Basically, our presence in the uh, forex market uh, is actually to ensure orderly market and also to ensure there's no excessive uh, volatility in the forex market. So that's the main objective in terms of our presence in the um, uh, forex action market. Maybe I don't want to add on that. Yes. Uh, well, firstly, uh, our foreign exchange market has uh, grown quite tremendously. So we can see on a daily basis volumes touching 15 to 17 billion. In the dollar ringgit alone, it's uh, sometimes it's between 9 to 10 billion uh, daily trading. So um, Ben Gara only steps in uh, in the cases where there is um, where, where there is a basically a lack of or where there is reduced liquidity, essentially. And sometimes this happens when there is strong sentiment one way or the other. So if everybody wants to buy, then some then there could be lack of sellers, and that's when Ben Gara will will step in, essentially. And uh, I should point out that actually Ben Gara also intervenes two ways. So in in periods of this high uncertainty or there's a lot of um, um, uh, uh, the volatility, uh, often we, we, we can find that market players may uh, be more cautious in terms of uh, trading in the, in the market. And that's where Ben Garen needs to step in to provide the assurance that the market is able to function, is able to, uh, is able to have that two-way quotation. And Ben is, um, uh, does regularly, does uh, intervene when necessary. Uh, but both uh, in terms of buying and in terms of selling. Uh, yeah. 
Thank you. Yes, dollars. Yes. Dollar ringgit. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So the total uh, traded in our onshore market is probably about fifteen to seventeen billion that we have seen um, this this year. Yeah. Dollar. Dollar. Fifteen seven billion dollars. Daily. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, we have come to twelve p.m. sharp. So, Governor. Governor, can I invite you for your closing remarks? Uh, thank you. First of all, uh, thank you for all of you for your questions and also uh, for joining us for our press conference uh, today. Uh, and memandangkan kita sudah pun berada di pertengahan bulan Ogos, uh, saya ingin mengambil peluang ini untuk mengucapkan uh, selamat menyambut Hari Kebangsaan kepada semua. Uh, dalam kita meraihkan uh, tanah air kita pada bulan ini, saya ingin menjemput anda semua untuk menghayati juga seni tempatan melalui pameran wayang kulit yang dikenali sebagai gerak bayang. Uh, pameran gerak bayang ini akan dilancarkan pada malam ini di Museum dan Galeri Seni Bank Negara Malaysia dan akan berlangsung hingga bulan Januari tahun hadapan. Saya harap semua dapat mengambil peluang untuk melawat pameran istimewa ini. Terima kasih juga kepada Datuk Sri Uzi dan rakan-rakan dan rakan-rakan saya di Bandar juga yang telah bersama-sama kita pada hari ini. Thank you so much everyone. Terima kasih Governor. Terima kasih Datuk Sri.